Not only is the Bug Ranch one of the finest restaurants in Winter Garden, it's also a decent place to work on cars. But sometimes when I go down there, I require using an oscilloscope. And the one that's available to me is this one right here, the 1570 from BK Precision. Unfortunately, while this one works, it does not work well. As some may have seen in some videos, it's actually uh, uh, taken off in one scene where we uh, jump to this analog oscilloscope and immediately cut to another scene where something entirely different happens, where in fact I have gone and gotten that one from home and ended up using this only because the this one does not um, suit my needs, uh, only because it doesn't function properly. Before we do anything with this, because it does work and it is safe to turn on, I'm going to go into really quickly why this one is a lot more useful than bringing mine, uh, primarily because it's made of metal and because it's a shop scope and it could get dirty and nasty and scratched and beaten up and and mine is kind of like you know one i keep on the bench and i don't like getting it greasy and dirty uh also it's uh it's an analog scope which is kind of cool because you can do a lot of stuff with uh, persistence of vision with an analog scope you can't do a digital that i rather enjoy but more importantly because it's already there and it's convenient but the thing is it's is it's got to work and I want to I want to show what problems I've been having with this thing uh, to lead me to this moment to where I had to to bring it in and and finally say hey this has got to be fixed. I'll point out that I've adjusted the uh, intensity for the oscilloscope for the camera and not for my viewing. It's extremely low, and I'm actually looking through the camera to see uh, how this actually plays out. I'm going to also point out that the input I'm using is channel one. This is a four input oscilloscope however the four inputs almost seem like an afterthought because it's it's kind of like there's channel one and channel two and channel one is also channel three and channel two is also channel four uh depending on where you plug in down here there's uh, uh three and four over here and you can flip them over here it's it's not it's not ideal definitely i mean as far as having modes it does have uh, four channels, but it's it's not it's not fantastic. The takeaway, as far as feature goes, would be if you needed a four-channel oscilloscope, here it is. As far as being feature friendly, here it isn't. But you know, four-channel nonetheless. So if you wanted to adjust for channel one, you could adjust here, and and channel three would be here, and you'd have to pull and and do this and that, and X Y is only supported by this and that, and. And you have to read the labels very carefully. And this could be channel 3 or external triggering for A. And channel 4 or external triggering for B. And, and it's absolutely a mess. When you, when you look at the labels, you can see the, the fault in, in the design. Again, however, infinitely better if you needed 4-channel oscilloscope and didn't have one. But I digress. Let me talk about some of the things. So, again, for the purposes of channel 1, this is the best condition that this oscilloscope has. Because this channel's one used most often and therefore these knobs are actuated and turned more than any other knobs on the device and if we look at this this is the waveform that comes with the device the calibrating waveform one volt peak to peak at one kilohertz right and if i if i touch it you could see that we have a uh, crackle and it depends on on which uh, uh setting you're on because and i've been working these The, def the contacts are definitely dirty. This is this is a, a you can see this one's all over the place. Maybe I could raise the intensity just a little bit as they as they fail, so it's easier to see what it looks like. And these this is bad contacts. So this is one of the faults. Let me get it back to a good. This point one it seems to be a place where it's 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 worked a lot. So that's where I want it to be right now. And this is also, by the way, this is the, the, the cal and uncal, and you can see how amazingly dirty that is. Because every time you turn the cal and uncal, there's a lot of scratchiness in that, in the pot. This brings me to my next problem. If we look at the screen now, and I'll lower the intensity here, and this is the calibration right here, one volt peak to peak at one kilohertz. I now have the machine set at one volt per division, and that is definitely not one volt per division. We're looking at about um, 
just at uh, one and a half graticules. So it's at about 25% of a division. And it's either the uh, uh, calibration voltage is off or this is completely out of calibration, right? So the, the voltage values are worthless on the machine. And obviously that right there says that none of this is good. And obviously I could adjust for the cal, but does the cal shut off, you know? So that's, that's a question too. And that, by the way, pulling it out is the five times gain. And that, that one's also dirty. Um, another issue is this. If I flip it over to, to force to ground, we see the next issue. And I have to zoom in to show the next issue. The line is not straight. It goes from top left to bottom right. The, the, the trace is not, is not horizontal on the whole scope. And obviously that's no good either. <laughs> so there's another problem. So far, I mean, I've only addressed one channel. Uh, the next obvious thing to say is all that being fine, knowing what the frequency is of the calibrated uh, waveform, is the frequency correct? So that would be the next thing that would have to be looked at. I can't really check the frequency because the triggering connection is dirty. So it's hard to get the triggering to stay stable. As you can see here. So a lot of a lot of challenges going on here. Sometimes I get it just right. There there, there it is right there. So <laughs> if I get it up now it's gone. So you can see all sorts of gremlins going on here. If I have the triggering set up correctly. We could see that I could actually get the timing to, to at least display something, you know, with actual looking at an actual waveform and there. So, so all sorts of, of, of definite uh, cleaning has to be done on this thing before anything else. And, and that's what, that's what we're working with for starters. I've taken the cover off, exposing the components inside. We could see, uh, obviously, CRT. I got to be careful not to damage, and about eight million different adjustable pots. I've started with the cleaning of the uh, pots up front, using uh, some of my deoxit, as well as these up here that I've had to open to really get inside and clean. It's going to take a while to use the deoxit there to get all of those uh, different knobs. That's the first thing I'm going to do to see if I can clear that up. Obviously, I'm going to need some sort of calibration manual and method uh, to see how the rest of this is going to be accomplished. I want to point out that I've switched over to the field tech. I'm still using one kilohertz, one volt peak to peak, but I've switched over to sine wave. It displays nicer on the oscilloscope for the testing that I'm doing right now. So this is where we're at right now, and I, I realize the triggering is still suboptimal. I'm working with what I have available. The triggering portion wasn't fixed yet. Right now, we're still up top here. But I want to show you, <clears throat> aside from some of these that I've, I've cleaned up, intensity and focus that are no longer scratchy, I want to show you some, this position is nice and smooth now, moving the position up and down no longer crackles, so that one's good. And the volts per division is now really nice. Let me bring this into the middle here for a second. I didn't say by any stretch of the imagination that it's calibrated, but they're all working really good now. That's the, the lowest right there, or that's 5 volts per division, 2, 1, 0 0.5, 2, 0.1, and then we get into the, the millivolts, which obviously we can't see at this level, but at least they're not dirty anymore. And that was, that was quite an effort to clean up that connector because of the way that it's designed. It's worth noting right now that the function generator is set up to 1 volt peak to peak, and now that I've got everything just as I want it, we can see that this, while not perfect, this is sitting at just about one volt peak to peak. Still requires a calibration of sorts, but it's not far off. Not bad at all. I'm gonna clean up this input, these switches, everything up here is what's gonna be done now. I'm gonna unplug, discharge the CRT, do everything up top, and then come back. 
However, it would probably be a good idea for us to switch to channel 2 and do before and after. This is channel 2, uh, set up the same way as channel 1, using the same triggering method that just allows it to trigger. Let's take a look at the quality here. So I'm going to flip through these and dirty connections. Yep, hold on. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, I can't, I can't hit that one. It just sort of, if I go really fast, I could get it. Yeah, these are gone. That one's the wrong one. And that one just appears. Yeah. So so these were all shot. You can see that's what it looks like. All these connections are bad up here. We're going to fix that now. While all this is going on, let's see what we could do to the case. Take a look at channel 2 now. Now that everything's been cleaned, I've got, got everything in the center position. And we'll start at the beginning. And now the volts per, per, per division sweep is looking good. Bring it back to uh, one volt per division. I believe I believe that's one volt per division, right? Five, two, one. Yeah, so this one is definitely um, not within calibration or more out of calibration than the other one. So that's going to require some work. No problem but the switch is clean and that's what I wanted to accomplish. Let's also check the channel 2 inversion. The channel 2 inversion works good. Let's make that a little bigger so we can see that. Inversion is working good. So, And obviously we're not going to see any bandwidth limitations, bandwidth filtering at this frequency. One thing I did notice is these two knobs here for the trigger, uh, not the ones on top, but the ones here inside the level are completely frozen for both of them. I find that very peculiar. Um, I've taken them off the plastics lest I break them and I'm going to try and unfreeze them with some deoxid from the inside now. Sure enough working it with a little bit of deoxid uh, did the trick. I was able to unfreeze it. It's a good thing I didn't use the plastic knobs. I surely would have cracked them. I'm going to work these and then treat them just like any other bad contacts and clean them. Get both of them working again and finally have a um, working triggers on this oscilloscope, be able to work on timing and then ultimately calibration. I was able to loosen up the other one too using the same method. These have uh, uh, quite a different feel to them. They're not, they're not, they have some torque behind them. So, but they turn nicely now. So I'm going to be able to put the tops back on. This one's already uh, put back together. It has the switch back on. And now because we have uh, the ability to trigger properly, I'm able to set this up um, with a source from channel 1, which I've done, and the the slope and level is able to be set. So you see, this is how we used to have to deal with it, and there was nothing we can do. And now I can set the slope, and, and being able to set the slope, obviously, I can set the time. And, and this portion up here, this top portion, has not been done yet. So only down here and the other side of the scope, so the time is still dirty. However, I bring this up. However, now that the triggering is working, I can actually go and do some do some things like look at the the uh, um, the uh, uh, time. I know that my my function generator is uh, at one kilohertz. I know what I could set the time to vision to, and then I could go and take a look and see. Uh, what the time calibration is. Obviously, I'm not doing that now. I'm just making sure that the the triggering is working properly too. I also set it to normal, and see that that works as well. So another piece of the oscilloscope is now again working properly. So very good. I cleaned up the uh, sweep time division circuits over here. Again, not calibrated, but working at this point. And I've set up the uh, frequency generator for an individual one kilohertz, one volt uh, sine wave going into channels one and channel two. And right now we are looking at our channel two. I switch over to channel one, so slightly off, but basically the same thing. There's channel one, there's channel two, one, two, one, two, right? So I can uh, set them for alt and you'll see that they're actually overlapping. I can move one away from the other 
We can see that both of them are actually there. If I touch a cable, it'll, it'll, it'll shift a little, right? I could, I could chop, I could add them to each other, right? But if I bring it back to, to Alt, I could set this to X, Y mode and go to one of those values and I'll reach my hand around the other side so I don't get in the way and set one of those values uh, to, to 6 kilohertz, maybe 6 right there. And we see a, a, a list is you pattern uh, forming here in XY mode. And then I will further offset that pattern by another couple hundred hertz. So we can see a pattern take effect. So we're now able to do cool stuff with this oscilloscope that before it was barely functional. So yeah, pretty cool seeing stuff happen with the oscope. And at this point already, it's time to um, pull the uh, guide and see how this thing could be calibrated because everything working, we know that it's not calibrated and that's the final step. The other thing is the case is still soaking in the bathtub with degreaser. We'll see how that's coming along as well. The case has cleaned up better than I thought. Um, unfortunately, with all the uh, grease and oil and possibly a lot of heat, and humidity that this has been exposed to over the years uh, the paint has essentially turned into powder and once it was washed you could see that the the paint just basically comes off of the unit it, it's on there but it's not and anywhere that you would uh, wash it even lightly agitate it when it's wet with a paper towel uh, removes it uh, but it's aluminum and it doesn't rust and it could be it could be left alone because it's a, it's a shop unit and it really doesn't matter and it's probably could be covered with grease again or it could be uh, taken apart all these uh, components could be taken out and it could be repainted and then reassembled uh, as far as the hardware goes you know the hardware sound on the unit and you can see it's seen a lot of moisture there's there's uh, pitting on the chrome not a big deal but at least it's not filthy and disgusting anymore and that's really what I wanted to accomplish and have a, a good look inside as I always do, just like on the Heath kits and make sure that, you know, it wasn't waterlogged, there wasn't any water damage and I didn't expect there to be. So that's the cleaning of this unit. And we can also see um, in cleaning this unit, uh, the back, the boilerplate and the model information for it. So there it is. I've returned a chassis here to the bug ranch and I've been talking with Jason about painting it, and, and we decided we're gonna go with that. Uh, as, well, as well as the uh, MT-665, where the top was gonna be painted, uh, we decided we were gonna go with Buck Ranch Orange. We then further decided there's gonna be a matching set. So we're gonna use the Buck Ranch Orange uh, to repaint this oscilloscope uh, chassis that no longer has paint on it. And this will sit on top of the MT-665 back there, which the also will be painted in Bug Ranch Arch. It'll be a nice match. Yeah. I think that'll be pretty cool. I'll be gone for a couple weeks. Everything will be nice and cured by then. It won't be no cheap ass rattle can paint. It'll be nice paint. Good? Good. I like it. Me too.